as my palette. These are my blues. Cobalt blue. That's the cerulean. That's the ultramarine. That's the indigo. The indigo is almost black. Those spots on that fish look black, but they're not black, they're indigo. So it's quite pretty. So we're gonna have some greens and reds and yellows and blues, all the colors of the spectrum on that fish. Nice. Absolute beauty. And I'm using that as my reference. Whenever you're gonna be doing any artwork, like drawing fish and stuff like that, this, the best reference makes for the best painting. So highly recommend getting good reference first. So the first thing we're gonna look at is proportions. How do we make this fish in the correct proportions? So it's a long fish and a narrow fish, kind of like a torpedo that goes through the water, a bit um, narrow on a profile, top to bottom, but otherwise it's torpedo shape or bullet shape. And so what's the right oval to get these proportions? And what I do is I always figure out what is the, the longest part and how do I divide that up? to make sure that I get it to the right proportions. And I tend to use heads. So I'm gonna say how many heads in a body length? And one head is about as wide as the body too. So that's gonna help right there. Body width, the head length are the same. So then I can divide this, this oval of the body into four parts, one head, two heads, three heads, four. And then the fin on top of that, okay? So that's a little less then another head going along on the fin there, but otherwise it's a four um, head oval. So it's, there's my guideline for the middle. Can you see that on the? Mm, barely, there we yeah. go. Zoom it in. You see it? Yes. Yep. Good. Fantastic. And so I'm gonna say, this is the length of my fish. I wanna divide that into four parts. There's a head, see that? Yep. And that's going to help me throughout the whole drawing. Now I can add my, my tail fin onto that. And I take a head and I put it in the middle one here. And I say one head length would be, that's the width of my fish. Those guidelines are vital to get this fish proportions correct. And then all you do is you, you tie it together with a torpedo shaped oval like that. And there is generally the shape of that fish. It's a little more round on the head here. So I'm gonna drop a jaw underneath there like that and maybe just raise that top, just finessing that. And then I can get up my trusty eraser <laughs> and start getting rid of lines I don't want. That's pretty good, huh? There you go, there's my fish. Now, one of the important things I'm using as a guideline on the fish is its butt. So right back here, on right about right here would be the anal area of the fish. And that's gonna help me with where my fins go, okay? So I have above the center line here, the center of the oval, the beginning of my dorsal fin going up. And behind the anus, behind the, 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 bot, the bottom, it's gonna be a fin going there, okay? So those are just general guidelines. I've got my oval. I've got the placement of my dorsal fin coming out the back of the fish, the placement of my anal fin coming out just behind the anus, okay? Now I have to get these two fins below the fish placed. And those are, uh, those are the pectoral fins, like our arms. So they're, they're um, duplicated. There are two of those. And then these here are the pelvic fins behind the, um, below the dorsal fin right here is a pelvic fin. And right about here, just behind the gills is going to be the, pe the pectoral fin. So the fins on this fish, are kind of confusing. So I'm trying to help make sense of it. The pectoral fins are the equivalent of our arms, the pelvic fins underneath the dorsal and ahead of the, the butt, the head of the anal fin is going to be the equivalent of our legs. So if this fish could walk, it would walk on the two uh, 
pectoral fins and pelvic fins. So there's a pair of pelvic fins here and a pair of pectoral fins there, okay? The anal fin is gonna be back here and it's longer in the front, short in the back here like this. So it comes up like that. Same thing with the dorsal fin, which is the biggest fin other than the tail. It's gonna be tall on top and short in the back. All right, so anybody have any confusion with that? You want some time to draw that? No, it looks like, it does look like a torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> it is a torpedo. <laughs> it just uses fins instead of propellers. <laughs> right. The, the torpedo shape is actually a part of its uh, adaptation and evolution. That's very important for it. And of course, we're gonna have the gills coming right behind here like this. And then another gill slit there, sort of, it's just the operculum. And then some little suggestions of folds underneath the chin there. And otherwise, that's the basic fish. Now we're gonna put the tail on. And it looks like I might have a problem with my tail. I might not have gone out far enough. So I'm gonna just double up on checking my head placement, there you go. So head, one, two, three. And so I should have a little more space here before I go to the fin. So my fin is a little bit too far forward. That's what's going on. And then I'm gonna have this sort of taper back level and up to meet the tail like that. So I've got a problem with my drawing. Had I been at home, I would restart this drawing and push my fish over a little bit. I misjudge my tail okay but i'm going to just for now i'm going to leave it where it is i've got all the parts and then this is going to have a bit of a it ends as as a curve of a circle right there where it ends at the tail I where the body stops and the fin begins of the tail Right where, yeah, where the, where the rays, where the fin rays end, there's a curve that's yeah. part of a circle, an arc. Okay, but it goes up above. So this is the mus muscle and bone of the fish here, and then it goes up above that a little bit. Okay, I'm really tempted to start over and just do it over quickly. I might just do that actually. Well, then it can, we can see how you do it quickly. So I'm going to put the head, I'm going to put the head a little further down. So there's the same center line. It's kind of like one of my fish stories. <laughs> Getting longer. <laughs> and there's the, there's the divisions. One head is going to be right here like this. And then there's the oval, new oval, pushing it over to the right a bit. I can curve the head a little more now. And there's the jaw underneath. Okay, so that's a little fat. I'm gonna double check that. See, that's way too fat. So come quickly, do that, that, and make it narrower. Okay, more torpedo shape. And then add another end on here. So that's one more head. And that would take me to the end of the tail. End of the tail should be there. So bring that back here, bring that up here. And I'm just gonna give it a little extra length. Now the tail height is going to be the same as the head length, okay? So a head length is a tail height. My tail might be a little bit too large. I'll bring that down to size, which brings it back to where the original mark was. I think Casper likes this show. <laughs> <laughs> he likes fish. <laughs> All right, so that's generally what I'm looking at here for this fish now. Okay, a lot of pencil lines. 
And then again, this is the middle mark now. So my dorsal fin going back to something like this. That's too big. What number pencil are you using? All right. So I'm going to talk about this pencil because I found this pencil after many years of, of drawing with all these, these fancy pencils. And this is just a, a Ticonderoga. And it's that's the brand, Ticonderoga. And it's a number two pencil. OK. But it has more graphite in it than most number two pencils. So it makes darker marks. And I like it. But showing up, especially on these videos, you can see it more clearly because it makes a darker mark. But it would be more like the equivalent of a number two, uh, a, a, a two B, of a of a, an artist pencil, a okay. softer pencil, not 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 a typical H B, which would be equal clay, equal parts clay and graphite. H Bs have equal parts clay and graphite, so okay. it's a fairly gray pencil, fairly hard but not too hard. So the anus is gonna be under here, like that. And then the anal fin is gonna come out here. And I like this repetition. And then I, one fin I haven't mentioned yet. So these three fins on the end of the fish are kind of like the tail, they come after the anus. So these three fins here, there's the anus. And this one here is adipose. Uh, fin. It's just a little fleshy fin. It doesn't have any real bony rays in it. All of these are bony ray um, fins because they're really strong and capable of taking a lot of pressure in the water. But this adipose fin, I'm not sure what it's for. Uh, there's, they don't have a scientific purpose for it yet. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe it's a residual from something that was bigger at one time. Very but true. It could very well be. It's a, a primitive fish. These fishes evolved like 150 million years ago. Um, okay, so adipose fin probably comes off of some coelacanth type beast. Mm. <laughs> the fish that walk. <laughs> All right, and then right in the middle here again, we're going to have this pelvic fin. Remember the fins now. Pelvic fin is one of the walking fins. That's the legs. <laughs> and then in the front here, we're gonna have the uh, pex. That's the pectoral, okay? And then we have the gills. So I'm gonna push that pec back a little bit. It looks too far forward to fit. So now I'm gonna get rid of all of these guidelines and just leave the fish. All right, so oh, there's, there my, we go. there's my oval. Now the eye and the mouth, those are hard. Okay, but this is a terminal mouth. These fish feed straight on, they hunt straight on, they grab stuff, grab bait, grab whatever at the end of their head. So it's pretty easy to place where the mouth goes. Some fish feed on the surface and their mouths go up to the top of their heads. Some feed on the ground on, the, on algae and stuff and their mouths are underneath their heads. These are right at the terminal end. So it's a typical terminal end mouth. And they have a maxilla, the upper jaw, that is sort of like a, a teardrop shape up here like this. So I'm just going to put that in, and then you can drop the lower jaw out from that, like that, and then I'll erase the end of my oval and drop it down a little bit as if the lower jaw has moved down like that. And there's the mouth. Okay. Something like that, right? Pretty cool. And it the instantly other. changes when you take away the interior marks. Isn't that wonderful? And when you start putting paint on it, it's going to change again. Uh, I got a lot of pencil lines on this, but that doesn't matter. It's just a demonstration piece. So yeah. anyway, so placing the eye. In the middle of the head would be right there where the, the, the maxilla, the upper jaw ends, OK? So right about here. And then the middle of the head going this way is there. So the eye is going to be right above that join right there. See that? <laughs> All right. How's that? More fishy? More fishy. And then the pupil in the eye. Like that. 
And of course, there'll be a little nose hole in the end over here, but we can't really see that and not a big deal. And then we can use the guideline as the lateral line that, where they sense electrical charges or whatever in the water and sense movement in the water. It goes up like that along the length of the body. It's very important. So I'll keep that in there. And I'm just gonna light my lines because I'm gonna start painting. Too much graphite on the page. Get rid of some of that graphite and I can still see where I'm going. I hope you can, but yep. we'll, we'll see it with the paint on there as well. I'm gonna start with yellow paint. It's gonna do a yellow wash underneath the whole thing. Now, when I wa what I want you to see is we're gonna start with the lightest colors first, okay? And so you can see the yellow down here, it's sort of golden, but you can mm -hmm. also see the yellow in the green. Is that obvious to you guys? Yes. Yep. Yeah, okay, so yellow in the gills, yellow in the fins, even though it's red and blue and green, there's a bit of yellow in everything. I'm gonna make a yellow fish. <laughs> That's the starting color. So I'm gonna grab my brushes. And for that, I'm gonna use a flat brush because I'm covering a large area and I don't need to be fussy. The fussiness comes at the end. Right now I'm just putting in yellow and then I'll put in some red on top of that and some blue and some greens on top of that. And then I'll go back in and, and add the shadows and the detail. But right now we're gonna start with large brush to do large areas. So my palette, I make sure it's all wet and then I spray it before I start to make sure the paint will be picked up properly. You can just use your brush to add water to your, your bricks of watercolor if you have colors. And then I'm just gonna add a little yellow to my fish. This is a light color of yellow. It's not to be too dark. But that'll be the light of the light, lightest color in the fish. And suddenly the drawing becomes a painting. And I think we want to wipe away this line, erase. Just cleaning up the drawing a little bit while the yellow is drying. Okay, so I'm gonna add the green to the back. You can see on the photograph how green and dark the back is. We're not gonna go dark yet. We're gonna build our dark. So I'm just gonna make a green wash over the back. And I could just add blue to the yellow and the, that would turn green, right? But I'll just start with green and then I'll bring in um, some reds down here. Too much green. Okay. And because the yellow is unlike Mount Hamilton, he's set twenty miles back. Still wet, it runs nicely and makes soft edges. It doesn't leave half at hard edges. I can put some green in there. Pen. Tail pen has a bit of green in it. Something like that. Uh, maybe a little green down on the belly here. But that's just very soft right now. We can add 
some darker color greens to that. So it's actually rhythm. already giving it some dimension. Beautiful. See how that works? That soft blending does that. It gives it that sense of shared within a, a curved body. Oval body. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? All right, so we have some green laid down. Let's put some red down. And the red I'm using is going to be uh, an alizarin crimson because it's that is pink, almost magenta quality to the red. I'm gonna use a crimson instead of a regular red to get that pinky red. right across the middle like that. And this will be the light part of the red. Right in the gills. Some red in the uh, pelvic. And some red in the anal fins. And some red in the Okay, there's actually red in the other pens as well, but I've noticed when I've looked at online images, people have used GoPros to film the fish in the water. You can actually see how red these fins are. There's the streak. Isn't that pretty? It's a very pretty fish. There's a lot more speckling on this individual. It's an older individual. And these are the freshwater version of the steelhead, these are the rainbow trout. Right. All right, so around that red is a bit of blue, and I'm gonna use a sort of a cerulean blue instead of a cobalt blue because it's got a, a more of a sky blue coloring, very pretty blue, which is what I'm seeing on this fish. So I'm gonna add that cerulean blue in a streak right, touching the red, actually overlaps. Mm. Don't want that to run down. There we go. <laughs> that will direct the gravity will pull that paint down rather than across the red. Watercolorists have to use gravity a lot. And <laughs> more, more often than not, they paint flat because of gravity. It can cause real problems when the paint is drying. Unless that's what you want. <laughs> Yeah, I, people use that to make tree trunks and stuff like because it falls on it. While it's falling, it's going, you know, to the right and to the left and jaggedy and craggly and looks like a tree, you know. That's and true. Sorry, John, what? That's, uh, that's really a great trick. Yeah, it is. It's fun. You got to play with the, what you have, you know. No choice. Makes it more fun that way. Okay, so there's my blue, and I'm just enhancing it a little bit on this end. Okay, and then a little blue on the fin ends down here. That one went too far. And you can erase with watercolors, especially this particular color. This lift, it's called lifting, where you wet the brush, dry it off quickly, and then soak up, suck up the water with the bristles or the dryer. So whatever is wettest will run into whatever is dry. So if it's a wet brush and I put on dry paper, it'll run off into the paper. The paper will suck the water out of the brush. But in this case, I'm sucking the water off of the paper by using a dry brush. Okay. A little more blue on the tips of this thing here. That pen's a little bit too squat should be longer okay 
I think we're starting up on a little bit of blue. Okay. Come on. Still drying. Maybe I can put some blue on other parts of the fish. One of the things about this fish is that the belly is white and I haven't actually worked with that yet. So I'm gonna just lift some of that yellow, a little bit of that yellow. There we go, see that? I can erase some of the yellow by wetting my brush, drying it off a bit, but leaving it damp enough to suck up some of that paint. There we go, white belly. And it's got a bit of a blue shadow under it. So I'm gonna outline the fish on the belly with blue. There's the anus. There. So that's the belly. That's the gills. And the lower mandible and blue shadow. A little bit of blue around the eyes. Give it a smoky eye. Smoky eyes, a little bit of makeup, <laughs> beautiful. It really brings it to life, the eye. Yeah. Yeah. Actually that eye is really blue, but I'm gonna go with a really dark blue and I'm gonna go with a narrower brush now, a rigger brush, which is just a very pointy, long pointy brush. See that? So this will allow me to do lines. It'll hold a lot of water in that bristle because it's long, mm -hmm. but it'll also keep a sharper tip. So rigger, rigger brushes are used for doing um, a lot of things like uh, signage, where you wanna do lettering and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Very important for drawing lines in any painting. I'm gonna go with a, a darker sort of ultramarine blue right now. And that's gonna allow me to, let me put my glasses on while I do this one. Any detail I'm gonna need to see what I'm doing. Didn't know I was blind, huh? <laughs> there we go. Oh, now I can see all the mess. Okay. I gotta clean this up. Okay, so here's the pupil, and I'm gonna put a little white spot in it there. There's the pupil, and that's just ultramarine blue. Or you can use an indigo, which is almost black, right? And then I'm gonna outline the, the eyeball. That, there you go. Now I'm gonna put the shadow of the mouth, shadow under the jawline, shadow above the jawline, and then separation of the jaw. That, and just enhance Shadow under the head, the gill slits. This is my drawing color for the shadow side. The drawing color on the upper side might be more of a green. I don't need to have it look dark. I need to have it look, you know, like a dark green, but not a dark shadow. And the shadows typically are blues or purples, so. I've chosen the blue in this case because it looks more fishy, more like water. I'm gonna outline my fin. Really see that coming along now. It's my anus. See how beautiful that brush is? I can do those lines and this yeah. blending. Blending up into the wet paint, still wet paint. All right, shadow around the fins, has the anal fin coming in here now. And it's gonna start right behind the anus and it has that hard spine. So I'm just gonna curve that spine. Oh, that was a terrible line. That's the, the line behind the anus there and then I think I might have gone too far with that. Bring that into the inside of my line rather than the outside. There we go. Hints of some of these. So if I'm gonna do rays, and I'm gonna start doing some hints of the rays right now, 
I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to put a line right towards the middle of the other side, like that. It doesn't have to go all the way, but I'm going in the right direction. I've divided the fin in half. I'm going to divide it in half here again. Divide it in half here again. Divide it in half here again. Divide it in half. Divide that in half. And I keep going smaller and smaller so the rays are equally spaced. Okay. And then this one here, they're all going to start here and go out and down. Half, half, half. That one has that hard edge, that spine at the end there. I'm going to put a shadow on my spines. There, like that. Okay. And then go back to the back of the fin with the ultramarine, the tail fin. Tail fin starts way out here and comes all the way back. Boom, 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 boom. Making this jaggedy at the edge suggests those spines. Okay. Um, a little bit there. Rough there. That line is not a straight line. It's a broken line to suggest the scales and the beginning of the rays. Rays going in. One in the middle, middle, curving back, curving, reflecting the curve of that, curve, curve. So they're curving this way around the center, the center is straight. Okay, and then that spine at the end there, very thick at the base, very strong. Okay, and the adibus fin, shape something like that. And I'm using a thinner blue instead of a green, but I can switch to green. This is like a dark sage green. It's a transparent color, so it's not as dark as that blue is. I'm just gonna add that green up there. It's quite pretty, adds that darkness. All the way back down the head there. And it's still not gonna be my final dark green. I will keep building on that dark green as I add dots to the edge and fade it in. Under the eye, I see there's a bit of green. It's this way. Huh. It's not quite big enough. So I'm going to fade that in that way using my finger. Painting with my finger now. All right, so here's, sorry, John, go ahead. No, I'm just, uh, just laughing at you painting with your finger now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never get over that. <laughs> brushes, I don't need no stinking brushes. <laughs> One of the first tools we had, right? <laughs> right, that goes way back. And I'm painting with the side of this rigger now to make it more of a broad brush, but I could use, I could use one of my narrower flats. So the original large flat that I used for painting was that one. Now I can use one that's half as wide. To apply this dark green, but in a thin wash, so I can build up the blend. The, Upper half of the body is quite dark. There we go. That's much more efficient than trying to use the rigger. <laughs> okay. I just did the whole fish. <laughs> and I'm going to do that tail again. Can you keep track of time for me? And I'm going to soften the edge here with. Uh, less paint, see that? And that blends it into the blue. Okay, so now upper fin, need some green. Actually, you know what? It looks pretty with some orange too. Huh? There's that. I'm gonna go back to the rigger to do the rays on that upper fin. I haven't done the rays there yet. All right, so I'll do the rays with the dark green. Well, no, I'll, I'll do it with the blue. 
ultramarine blue with a bit of green in it. And the same technique in the middle, middle, middle. I just want to interject to Richard that it's nice to be able to hear the birds in the background. Those are probably mallards that were calling. We got ducks and coots. And... I paid them ten dollars a piece. <laughs> there we go. And so what we're starting to do now is just we've got the the lights, the red, the blue, the greens, the yellows. Everything's in place. Now we're going to start to add the detail. And we've got the red color here, that's nice. I can add a little uh, ochre, yellow ochre to these fins because they're a little bit too green. And I want them to look more of that sort of reddish tinge, but not quite as red as those. Or I could add a little red to them, but just not as much. Um, but I just need to add something that's gonna bring them into that orange brown. So there's the ochre color. Mm -hmm. Like yellow poop. <laughs> Those are one of that's one of the first colors that was used by man painting in caves and everything. Yellow ochre. We still use it. Old technology. We don't recognize how our links to the past. Look at how pretty that is. So it's adding that warmth to the fins that it needs. Okay. And I'll put some on the adipus and then some in the tail. I'm going to bring that back from the base to the end. Now, that's the way it's supposed to go. <laughs> Some ochre in the, the face there. I can add some more ochre to these fins. Just a little bit of, that's the right color for the fins actually. That ochre with the red in it, it's nice, but it's, the ochre should be dominant. All right, so these are the basic color patterns um, of this fish. Now we're going to start to add that dark indigo blue again, and we're going to put on those spots and then finish up some of the detail in the fins. Mm -hmm. But we've got, we've got all the, the components going here, so I'm going to start putting in the spots using the rigger. Here's my palette. These are my blues. Cobalt blue. That's the cerulean. That's the ultramarine. That's the indigo. The indigo is almost black. Those spots on that fish look black, but they're not black. They're indigo. Mm. Yeah, it has a lot of gray in it. Look. See that? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the color. If you thin it out, you can really see the blue in it. Okay. Yep. It's a gray. It's a dark gray. It's almost like a black blue. Yeah. That's what denim is indigo. The original denim. All right. So where are the spots? The spots on the fins are in rows, sorry, in rows, that way and this way. So they go along the spines. And there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on that middle one, the longest one, okay? Over here, there's four or five going out to the end of the fin. And then they, you can see little sort of funky rows going that way. And in some fish, it's very patterned, okay? Otherwise, it's just sort of a, a random cluster, all spaced equally apart along the top and thinning out, uh, blending down into the body and then disappearing on the belly. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to put some big spots everywhere. All right? But not every everywhere. Like we saw, they're going to be on one, two, three, four. Oh, these are running. Ah. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's still wet. It's supposed to be drying. All right. So we're going to start on the back then. Hopefully that'll be, yeah, that's dry. Adipose fin. There we go. 
All around the edge of the adipose fin, there are spots, one in the middle. Okay, that's pretty. Along the anal, there's just a few. Right there like that. Yeah. And none on the none on, on the um the pelvic and just none on the that's interesting. One in the middle, one in the middle, one in the middle. So none on the um pectoral either. Those are two dots. Trim that out. And I'll do I'll do these with a darker brown later, but right now I'm just gonna leave them alone. They have they have enough detail for now. This I'm gonna add some gill slits, not slits, but a fold down here. It's a hint to remind me to finish that up. Along the back, I'm gonna try starting the indigo again. And hopefully the back is drier than that uh, dorsal fin. So we're just gonna put about uh, half a centimeter apart, a millimeter wide dot, half a centimeter apart. And just keep doing that and then space them out equally. And you don't have to be absolutely perfect with this because every fish is going to be different. And I'm just going to space these out about half a centimeter apart. And you can see the pattern starting. Mm -hmm. This is when art gets very boring for others and thoughtful for the person doing it. Just start thinking about other things. <laughs> meditative, <laughs> meditative. Meditative. <laughs> Fish zen. Fish zen. So there are very few around the head here. So I'm just gonna quickly fill those in. Probably one there, one here, and then maybe another one next to it. And then a couple down here, one down here, one there, and the head's done. Okay, and now we're gonna continue down the body here. And my watch fell off. The band broke it, so that's why I don't. I can't keep track. <laughs> it's in my pocket. <laughs> the pin broke on me. All right. So these spots are actually quite large on the side of the body here, and they, they're sort of got weird shapes, like combinations of dots. So I'm going to just add a couple of those larger dots there. Yeah. Weird shapes. All the way down to the lateral line. Are we getting there? Put yourself in the zone. And before you know it, all done. And then I'll do the fins here okay, now that they're drying out. That indigo needs to be recharged. So when you fill the brush with um, pigment, 
It's called charging and you can do it wet or dry. I'm doing it sort of in between. So I got a lot of pigment and some moisture, enough moisture to make it last. And the rigor really holds it. You see how many dots I can do with one charge. Quite interesting. Okay, so that's the bulk of the body uh, markings. And I'm just gonna go back to the tail quickly. Wait, no, there's a whole group down here below the red. How large do these fish get? Well, the resident rainbow trout that live in a creek, I believe the distinction between the two might be like 24 inches. So anything over 24 inches is considered a steelhead rainbow trout. Steelhead rainbow trout in some areas can reach up to 20 pounds, you know? Wow. And plus, you know, and so. They look quite cool. different on that. I mean, when they get That's that. called dinner. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you have a resident rainbow trout that lives in a, a creek eating smaller macro invertebrates like stoneflies, mayflies, dragonflies, as opposed to a steelhead rainbow trout that migrates out to the big Pacific Ocean and is eating, you know, larger crustaceans and other things. They're, they're just, you know, two different, um, same species, just two different, you know, lifestyles. Mm. Plus they're swimming in stronger water to a large extent in the ocean. Absolutely, so they get buff. <laughs> <laughs> How big do they get when they're still there? They're just a 20 something pounds? Yeah, they can get 20 something pounds. In our area, more six to eight pound range. So I'm doing about eight of these dots, maybe nine dots along, along the length of this now. And the thing about them is that they do go in a pattern. So I can start in the middle and say, now that I've figured out where the middle of my tail is, I can start to put dots where there'll be a ray and make it in a pattern, sort of like following the outer edge of the tail. So it goes in at the middle and then across. So it's a bit of a dip in the middle there. So I'm gonna mirror that and I'll just do it here. William says details matter when you paint anything. And he also says that's a lot of eating. 20 pounds is a lot. <laughs> you need a good fish. It's a big fish. So it looks in a way like the dots help to break up the appearance of the fish that it might make it harder for prey to see it. So the predators, yeah. So from the top here, you're going to mm -hmm. have all the dots. On the bottom, no dots. So the top, it's creating this idea of gravel shadows. Um, right. They get lost in the gravel ro rocks and, and weeds uh, better when they have these patterns that break up the outline, break up the, the uh, shape of the... You know, so they'd have a... Camouflage. So they'd have a predator coming from the top. Osprey or kingfishers whatever is going to come from the top. Um, but of course, you're going to have bigger fish in the creek too, probably, for a while, and the smaller especially. So let's do, uh, let's do the next row on the uh, caudal fin or the tail fin. And then one, two last rows here, quickly. How are we doing for time, Tanya? It's two o'clock. You've got a while to go, another 10 minutes or so. Oh, good. We'll go as long as you want. Okay. And then. So again, it does not be perfect, but it has to have that general look, you know, pretty good. I'm, I have never been perfect at it, but it's still, it's good. Okay, so there. And then the, sorry, the dorsal fin hasn't been done yet, but it's still wet. Right. It's, we had some trouble here on the 
tail fin too. It's still wet there for some reason. It's not drying out. Okay, so let's go here. There are a couple up in the middle, and then right across, following the line of the outer edge, sort of like that. Couple in the middle here. And then I'm going to strengthen that shadow line there. So that's pretty much the wow. blue. I'm going to add a little red to the mouth to make it look a little more like blood. There we go. And a little bit of red. Just Well, you know what I want to do? I want to do do the shadows on the fin. So I'm going to go switch to a red brown, a sort of a rust brown, and do some of these shadows in the fins there. All the way to the end. There we go. That's pretty. And I'll just darken it up in the middle at the end. Of the skin. Tail fin. And because I have the blue guidelines, oh, it's running. It's still wet. That tail is still wet. <laughs> Not drying under the shade here. Let's go with this one then. That really changes how it looks. Amazing. What we're going to do is take some of that same color we're going to add it to the fish itself because it's got a golden quality to it it, it act, actually adds a lot to the fish yeah if you're right i'm going to just bring a bit of that sienna it's um burnt sienna into the green And I'm just painting over those dry spots, but I'm also using the paper to make a, a pattern, a rough um, spotty pattern with the sienna. And then right here. Finally, pectoral. Yeah, again, it adds more dimension. And then to the jaw, hopefully we can add some dimension to the jaw too. Blending it into the green is kind of pretty too. I'll add some more red here afterwards, but I just want to have that extra thing in the green. Okay, you can use it to hint at scales with the rigor brush though, not, not with any flat brush, just by putting thin lines 
running diagonally, but curving. As shadows of scales. Hmm. William and says it sounds like a chipmunk in the background. <laughs> it's a bird. It's a bird um, called a yellow rump warbler. I don't know if you have them there. But they come from the north at this time of year. They spend their, their winters here, and then they leave in the spring. They go nest up in the north. It's not much of a warble. <laughs> oh, it's not a warble. Again, that really adds an, another level of dimension. This is the texture coming in here now. So it's, it's hints at scales. Mm -hmm. And it makes the green a little warmer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I, I haven't done the tail yet because the tail was still wet. So I'm just going to do the tail and hopefully that'll also make the tail look a little warmer. William says, thank you for the name of the bird. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. There, how's that? That tail looks a lot better, I think. Yes. And then I'm going to add a little bit of it down in the yellow on the belly. I just want to rub some of the graphite up. Okay. Enough it. Okay. And so we're going to bring some of the scale. And I can see the pattern here. And again, it's sort of excess. So you're doing a cross hatching. A little bit of cross hatching just below the red and in the yellow mostly. And first one goes right to left. Too much into the blue there. And then maybe down a little bit, curving away to the back. Yeah. And then you're going to come back this way curving around the body to make the X cross hatch. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that makes that yellow brighter. But it, that was a brown. That was the <laughs> Sienna. So that yellow in the background colors it yellow. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, but with the crimson. That original crimson is so pretty, it's going to add that zing to the red using that same technique. So first of all, I'm going to do that, that lateral line. See that, how much prettier that is. Then come back in and scratch X's in the red. I should take my time. Don't move too fast. At home, I would sort of really get into this, making this perfect pattern. Let's go better speed. All right, fix that. Okay, and then some above the line. Charge the brush. Isn't that red? Well, here comes the snow. Hmm. And then finishing up with this so this actually helps to blend too it puts texture 
but it also acts as a bit of a blend. So my brush is wet now. Every now and again, I have to dab it off on my piece of paper. It's just too much charge. So there's the scaling, and we can soften it up a bit. And then we're going to add some of that red back here, where it's sort of really blended in too much. And it brings more color back to the gills, especially right there near the eye. And finally, the last thing I want to do is add that yellow to the eye. Um, and the eye has a, I'm going to make it a little darker than it actually is. The eye has some dark spots. That really makes the eyes think. The eye has some dark spots on it. Um, so I'm going to use a little of that indigo. On either side of the eye, sometimes these fish will have dark spot right there and right there. Mm. Cutting through the eye. That'll blend in softly. Ta-da! Well. It's not perfect. I would spend more time on it, but you know, it gives you the general idea. You can, you know, finish it up at home and work on the details if you manage to keep up with me. <laughs> it's a wow. long. Can you grab a screenshot, John. I will do. Thank you. Just hang on. Let's grab two, one with the fish and one with Edward and everything. Got it. Yeah, hold on. Let me zoom back out. Is that just a little bit, Edward? There we go. Then you have both fish. And <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Excellent. Great shot. Well, thanks, thank you guys. very much, Edward. Yes, yeah, William says welcome. thank you to the both of you. Thank you very much. Man, that's a beautiful fish. It really is. <laughs> now you see that. Now you see why they're called the rainbow trout. They're rainbow trout. They're not <laughs> complete spectrum. <laughs> Make us hungry. <laughs> so that is the rainbow trout, Oncorhynchus micus. That's the coolest Latin name. Yeah. Well, everybody, let me get in here with Edward. What a relaxing time that was. You know? <laughs> yes. I really agree that you know, um, it, it kind of um, you know, takes you away for the moment, putting in those dots and stuff, you know, to really get into a nice zone out here with the birds and with the sound of all these um, mallards and coots around here and the wobblers. And so thank you so much for joining us. Um, have a wonderful day. J John, Zoe. William, hey. David. Take care. Patricia. Bye-bye. Take good care. Bye. Guys. Bye. Hope you had a good Bye -bye. time. Thank you. Bye, William. Bye. <laughs> they are clear, uh, meaning that they haven't been fertilized. And once they're fertilized, uh, they become eyed eggs. And so um, after about 22 days, they're going to become elevin. And that little yolk sac you see there is actually their food reserve uh, for the next 30 days. You can come um, even closer. Okay. Just let me know, up or down, left or right. And, Just... um, and then eventually they absorb that yolk sac into their body and they become a fry. So we go from fertilized eyed egg, egg to fertilized eyed egg to elevin to fry. And eventually they get bigger, right? And uh, they're going to uh, live in the river for a while and then they're going to out migrate uh, to an area here which is known as Al albizo where there's brackish water they're going to smultificate change physiologically and psychologically and then they're going to migrate out to the san francisco bay underneath the golden gate bridge out the pacific ocean they're going to get really big they're going to grow to be adults and then eventually they're going to migrate back underneath the golden gate bridge and through the San Francisco Bay and up Alviso and into the Guadalupe River, uh, where we where we have found them uh, here.
uh, including this week. Um, and so this is part of the fall migration. And so we just wanna highlight them, right? By, by educating you about them, making you aware of, of them. And then today, you know, Edward is gonna um, paint one. And, and, and one of the you know, goals of that is just you being able to identify one of our native fish species here or where you're from uh, in hopes that you can, you know, help them because, um, you know, rainbow trout in our area here in Santa Clara County, you know, uh, their populations are, are kind of low. And although they've adapted to our warmer waters and lower dissolved oxygen levels, you know, um, the 2 million people here in our county, you know, they have a lot to deal with. And so just really happy to be able to uh, educate and, and make you aware of their presence here and including the Chinook salmon, okay? Yep. Cool. Perfect. That's a nice display. All right. Yeah, thank you. And with that, you know, um, we'll be bringing in Edward Brooks.